Hello everyone, my name is Sean. I am still the Crypto Smith. Thanks for coming back to the channel. I do appreciate it. If you guys wouldn't do me a huge favor and like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. For that, I really appreciate it. That is the reason I am here. Today, we're going to be discussing the SEC versus Ripple case again. Now, just a couple of days ago, the transcripts uh, from the June 7th hearing before Judge Netburn uh, came out. So we get to see the total disaster that this hearing was for the SEC, and it's delightful to read. I read the transcripts. I'm not going to read them all to you, but I'm going to pick out certain parts that really, that kind of show you how bad this hearing was for the SEC. You can go to James Filan on Twitter and follow him, and you can get the transcript for yourself if you really want to read it. It is quite interesting to read. So here is... The transcript here and the, the first couple pages are just uh you know all the niceties uh hello everybody and introducing who everyone is and giving uh you know rules of the court and all that uh mrs guerrier guerrier uh, i'm not exactly sure this is the attorney for the sec now we all assumed she was uh new right we assumed uh after hearing how bad this went we assumed you know she was walking down the hallway and one of the senior sec uh, attorney said, oh my gosh, we're going to go to this hearing and we're going to get our butts handed to us. Let's find somebody new so they can take the hit. And they just shoved a bunch of, uh, you know, file folders in somebody's arms and said, hey, go in there and uh, represent the SEC for us. Uh, and that's really what we thought happened and why this thing went so badly. But apparently that's not actually what happened. And I'll explain that just uh, at the very end of this. So, so this is the attorney for the SEC. This is Judge Netburn, right, as the court. This hearing basically is bringing all the parties together before the judge so they could they could discuss why the SEC is bringing forth a, an attorney-client privilege claim to the Bill Hinman emails, which is what we want to see. Ripple wants to see them because it's going to give them some idea of how the SEC came up with this uh, Ethereum free pass speech and why they think Ethereum is not a security or Bitcoin is not a security and Ripple is. So... Uh, and the SEC has been fighting almost the entire time of this of the legal proceedings, trying to hide these emails. It's I mean it's insane the amount of time that's been wasted on this. Obviously, there's something there that they don't want anybody to see, right? Something that's going to look very very bad for the SEC. We're assuming. So now they're getting the parties together so they can discuss it. And why are they doing this? And why is this important? Because the SEC has changed their mind on this speech multiple times. At the very first time. It was just his personal opinion. It was just Bill Hinman's personal opinion. You guys don't need to see this stuff. It's not really relevant uh, to the case. And then uh, came out a little bit later. Uh, they said, well, it wasn't really his personal opinion. It really was the opinion of the corporate finance division, which Bill Hinman was the director of. Okay, so that's number two. So now not his personal opinion, even though in his deposition, he stated multiple times it was his personal opinion. It was not him acting as director of corporate finance. Okay, so I think that could get somebody in some legal issue here. Uh, you basically are lying. Somebody is lying to the court. And I'll show you towards the end of it uh, what their third opinion is now about what this speech was. And it's a doozy. Like, they really dunked on themselves on this one. I mean, it's, it's funny if it wasn't sad, but but here we are, right? It's good for XRP and good for Ripple. So let's, let's keep going at this one. Uh, the attorney for the SEC, yet uh, Director Hinman, sought legal counsel from SEC attorneys, uh, beginning with the attorneys in the Division of Corporate Finance, which he was the head, about the application of securities laws to digital assets in connection with the speech that he gave, right? So he was, they're claiming he needed attorneys to give him legal advice on, uh, just to make sure that he wasn't going to be inconsistent with the legal views of how the SEC views securities or not. Uh, so that's why he was getting legal advice. The speech was very legal, purely legal, and addressed legal issues. Okay, now this speech who that originally was his personal opinion uh, supposedly is very legal, purely legal, and addressed legal issues. So the court or the judge says the speech was legal, you said? Yes, Your Honor. Basically, the speech addressed the securities laws application to digital assets. So basically the same thing. Uh, they wanted to make sure that he wasn't inconsistent with uh, the views of the SEC in general. And it just goes on. And, and, and basically, the attorney for the SEC is going to say the same thing about 10 different ways uh, throughout this. I'm not going to read all that to you or, or go over all that. But basically, that's what she's doing. Uh, so now we're going to skip down to page six. Okay, at the bottom here, uh, the judge says, okay, we've been talking about Mr. Hinman. 
I think since August of 2021. Then the issue of his deposition came up. There was there was a position that the SEC took that he was not speaking on behalf of the SEC when he gave the speech, and that his statements cannot be imputed to the SEC that they were own personal views. Basically, again, uh, it was his personal opinion. He wasn't speaking for the SEC, and even at that point, back uh, in August of 2021. Uh, he wasn't speaking for the division of corporate finance, which he was the head of. So it was just his personal opinion doesn't represent the SEC. Do you stand by that position today? The attorney for the SEC says, if I may clarify, if the speech is determined to be his personal speech as the court has ruled, and I don't understand this, if the speech is determined, he's the one who said it was his personal speech. And then the judge decided and ruled on it in court that said, okay, going forward, we're going to view that speech as his personal opinion. So as the court has ruled, it doesn't change the fact that he sought legal counsel about legal issues that were uh, before and prior prior to providing that final speech. Now also, so what she's trying to say, right, so he may have got legal advice to make sure he wasn't saying anything inconsistent uh, with the SEC guidance, but he ended up just giving it as his personal opinion, which I don't know how they uh, parse that uh, into two separate things. Okay, and then it goes on, uh, the judge says, you know, she keeps getting hung up and she's not understanding about what they're trying to say. The SEC has distanced itself from Mr. Hinman's speech and said that it had nothing to do with the SEC. So the judge understands what's going on here. Those were his personal views and he made that speech based on how he believed the law should be applied or what he thinks about digital assets. And then she goes on to say, again, I'm having a hard time reconciling the fact that, right, that they're trying to really have it both ways here. And then let's skip down to page 13. I don't want to drag you through everything here. It can get very long. The court here, I'm familiar with the law and I don't think the law is that controversial. I think it's actually pretty clear. To me, the biggest issue is trying to reconcile the position that the SEC has taken in this litigation with the position you're talking here today. Now, this is the judge again saying this. She's trying to figure out what they're doing. This speech has played a central role, I think, from the defendant's perspective, and I'll hear from them in a moment about how Ripple and its officers understood the SEC's approach, right? So the SEC or the Ripple is trying to say, we need to see these emails so that they can understand uh, the SEC's approach to how they determined Ethereum and Bitcoin to be a commodity and not a security so that they can apply those same standards to Ripple and XRP. And if they can apply the same standards, XRP would be determined not to be a security and Ripple should be clear of any of these charges. So it seems to me that the SEC took a position earlier in this litigation to distance itself from the speech and is now taking a position to embrace the speech for purposes of cloaking this material. Judge is calling them out to the mat right here. Like this is the judge from the top ropes again, telling the SEC that I know what you're doing and it isn't right. And it's not consistent with good legal practice. And again, under the law, I don't think the law, again, is that controversial. This is the judge talking or hard to apply as a general prop proposition. In fact, I feel like we are talking about this speech in different lights, depending on how it suits the SEC. Right? This is not a good thing she's telling the SEC. The SEC is being told, you guys want it one way, and then you want it another way, and then you want it one way here, and you want it another way there, depending on how uh, you're trying to argue this case. And she sees right through it. It's a double standard. So dunking on the SEC again. Actually, they're dunking on themselves. It's ridiculous what they're doing. I don't know how they can't see that this is completely obvious to anybody who's reading or listening to this. Uh, and I don't know how actively you, if you're watching this or following the case, it is super fascinating to watch the SEC go down in flames. So she just got her butt handed to her on this one, or the SEC did, but she represents the SEC at this point. So unfortunately it falls on her and she goes on. I don't think we're saying that Director Hinman is not acting in his official capacity, which is stupid to say if he's acting in his official capacity and he's giving a speech, then he's giving the opinions of the SEC because he represents the SEC. Just because he was the head of corporate finance division doesn't mean he's not part of the SEC. Anybody in that position that's giving a speech that has some sort of legal implication to it is giving the views of the SEC. They try to add caveats in these speeches that said, hey, you know, whatever he says may not necessarily represent what the SEC as a whole uh, might believe, but we know that is complete garbage. So the judge says, hey, if, if we want to pull up the transcript of his speech, can you tell me which were his personal views and which were the SEC statements? And again, she's saying, well, again, the disclaimer, 
uh, in a speech that the SEC was not taking a view on Director Hinman's speech. So basically, you know, he's on his own here. We don't really uh, have anything to do with it. Uh, and it goes on and on and on. And then at some point here, uh, we get uh, Mr. G uh, Solomon, who is representing Ripple, and he gives his opinions on what's happening and why he thinks this is complete garbage that the SEC is trying to rage, uh, raise attorney-client privilege. And let's skip down to page 29. And page 29 is where it all happens, right? This is the part, this is the going to be now the third view the SEC is taking on Bill Hinman's speech. So this is the attorney for the SEC. The predominant purpose of the counseling that Director Hinman received was legal advice, legal business of the government. She's saying that because in order for the, the court to allow them to claim attorney-client privilege, the predominant purpose of the counseling has to be legal guidance, right? That is the, uh, the rule that they follow. And then the attorney for the SEC continues, the purpose was to provide guidance to the market on legal issues before the SEC. Now, if she was trying to do this on purpose, this would be where you drop the mic. But now she's saying, not his personal opinion, right? It wasn't a uh, director of corporate finance's opinion. She's saying the purpose was to provide guidance to the market on legal issues before the SEC, which is probably the dumbest thing she could have stated in this hearing. This is going to have ripple effects, no pun intended, but that was a pun, uh, throughout this case, right? They have changed their mind now three times. I don't know how they don't go after them for disbarment. I don't know how they go, don't go after them for whatever the, the misconduct of uh, attorneys, you know, what kind of trouble can they get in for this? Uh, they are lying. They're just bald face lying to the judge again and again and again, depending on how it might suit their purpose at this time in the case. So this is basically what everybody said. When we heard this guy, we didn't have transcripts yet. We just heard that this is what she said. We thought, oh my God, like they just totally screwed up here. Like this is one of the biggest mistakes they've made in this case by far. And then we thought, well, this must be a brand new attorney. Like I said in the beginning, you know, she didn't know what she was doing. She was just kind of thrown into the last second. But if we go over here to the uh, Twitter feed again, and you go down to here to uh, Fred Raspoli, who's also an attorney. He says, FYI, she is not a junior attorney. She has decades of high stakes litigation experience. That's how bad this hearing was. So she was a very experienced attorney dealing with high stakes litigation, and she let that slip out. I don't know how, how much worse it could be. Transcript here, right? We don't really need to go any further. Uh, essentially, the judge says, okay, thanks a lot. I think she has everything she needs. It took a while from then for her to make her determination. Obviously, judges have a lot of different cases before them. You know, it's not just one case. So it could take weeks or months for them to get decisions back. But she got a decision back. And I'm sure she thought about this thoroughly on how to eviscerate the SEC without causing issues. So, right, I mean, as the judge, she wants to make sure that her uh, decisions are appeal proof. Like they can't go back and say, well, we need a new trial or we need a new judge or we need because of these conditions. She has to be very careful of how she words things and words her decisions. And basically she said, no, you don't get to apply attorney client privilege. It doesn't make any sense. You guys are just keep changing your mind depending on the day. So then Forbes came out with an article just today, basically stating the SEC slapdown is a wake up call to Congress. Now, the judge berating the SEC, telling them that they were hypocritical, and I covered this in my one of my last videos, uh, in taking this two-sided stance, and they wanted it one way one day, and then another way another day, depending on how it suited them, uh, she, she called them out. This article here is to say the same thing. On July 12th, the U.S. District Court rejected the Security Exchange Commission's request to withhold documents on the Hinman speech in a highly anticipated ruling, and I was really waiting for it. Every day I was hoping it was going to come out. Finally, it did on the 12th. Highly anticipated ruling, the ongoing SEC versus Ripple case. Judge Netburn denied the SEC's motion, citing the attorney-client privilege and deliberate process privileges. The judge slammed the agency for hiding documents which could answer questions in front of the court. She called the behavior so egregious that it impugns the agency's faithful allegiance to the law. Like, I if... I don't understand how there are not charges in this. I don't understand how uh, there aren't investigations going on. But this is Forbes saying, "Hey, I think the I think Congress needs to look at this now." Uh, Maxine Waters, um, who is mostly useless, 
but she's on an oversight committee uh, for the SEC uh, Enforcement Division. So uh, they're going to have a hearing next Tuesday. Uh, I wonder what's going to happen there. I don't know if anything's going to be brought up. It would be nice to see. I'm going to be watching uh, just to see if this is mentioned, if the SEC is mentioned or this uh, certain case is mentioned in that hearing. It's going to be interesting. Uh, hopefully you'll watch. So it is the end of this video. I'm going to give you just real quick how I think this is going to end, right? And we're still not anywhere close to this ending. We, we probably got another six months at least uh, because things move very slow. So the SEC is going to go ahead and appeal uh, this ruling of being denied attorney client privilege claims. Uh, they already stated they would. Uh, that's going to get denied. I'm nearly positive. I'm going to say I'm positive. I'm 100% positive. It's going to get denied by Judge Torres as it goes up the chain. And that's going to be the end of that. Now, what's going to happen after that? I don't know. But I believe this ends where the SEC is going to be forced into a settlement. They're going to realize at some point that they've lost and they've lost big and they've lost the trust of uh, the public. And it makes them look very, very bad. And there probably should be some criminal investigations going on to the very beginning of this uh, SEC lawsuit. But there may be a settlement where Ripple wins and the SEC gets to say that they won too, right? So maybe they say, hey, in the very beginning, uh, you guys sold uh, securities, so we're going to fine you for that. And they'll Ripple will say, okay, that's fine. We'll admit to that and we'll pay the fine. But ongoing uh, sales of XRP is not a security uh, so then they don't have, we don't have to worry about anything going forward. And then Ripple gets to win because of that. So, so you won't, and you won't hear about all of this stuff uh, in the headlines. I'm sure when this comes out, you'll only hear that the SEC won and the SEC will claim, Hey, we won. You know, we knew we were going to win. We were right the whole time. Uh, and you're not going to hear any of the nonsense that they claimed uh, during this case, which needs to be investigated by Congress, as I said. So that's the end of this video. Um, I just wanted you guys to be up to date on what's going on. Uh, that's the uh, transcripts of the July or the June 7th hearing. Uh, that was a disaster for the SEC. Honestly, it couldn't have gone better for Ripple. I appreciate you guys coming back and, and checking this out. You guys have a great night.